In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create some beautiful abstract shots at home using nothing but some paper and some lighting. I'm going to uh, start folding some paper and I'll see you in just a sec to get started. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapts Looks and welcome to another macro photography tutorial where today I'm going to be showing you how to create these beautiful abstract shots with lots of curves and shapes and colors uh, and we're going to be doing it with something as simple as paper. Now I'm using this uh, white plain uh, printer paper, it's a three size, but you guys can go and gather up uh, whatever sizes and shapes and types of paper you have at home, uh, be it colored paper or just plain printer paper. Um, gather it all up and we're going to start folding this stuff uh, into really interesting shapes and shooting it with our camera lit by the Adapt Look Studio. So go and grab your paper, I'm going to get started. The very first thing that we need for shots like this is a surface to shoot on. I have here my uh, trusty glass topped coffee table, which is the perfect surface for this type of shot. Um, it's going to be really good because I can place things on top of this glass, but I can also place light underneath the glass and it's going to shine through. Now you can use anything that does that in a similar way, so any uh, maybe clear plastic or if you have a sheet of glass like this then perfect, prop it up and give yourself some space underneath that glass to place some light. On top of the glass I'm actually going to pay place our first uh, sheet of paper. I'm just going to put it on our glass here and then I can shine light through both the glass and the paper. What that's going to do is diffuse our light. Now uh, we've got some quite harsh light in the form of the Adapt Look Studio. These, uh, these lighting arms, they have some diffusers that we can pop on there, but we actually need quite a large uh, diffusion surface, so I'm going to use this piece of paper. When I place my light underneath the paper, you can see that we have control over how large this uh, spotlight of light becomes. Placing it close to the paper is creating quite a small little spotlight. Moving it further away widens that uh, so it's a little bit dimmer, but it's also quite a lot larger. Now I'm going to be taking advantage of this all the way through this shoot. I'm going to be placing uh, more paper on top of this little scene here. I'm going to be shooting down from the top and I'm going to be changing my lighting all the way through. I'll try and show you as much of that as possible, but for now I'm going to set up my camera up there. So this is my camera and tripod setup. I'm shooting on a tripod today simply so that I can um, set my focus point and not have to change it providing I don't move my camera. This is because uh, my paper is all the same size today and the width of that paper is going to stay the same so I can just focus down onto the top of here and no matter how I fold my paper or roll it up I'm going to be focusing on the same height uh, no matter what. Uh, you can shoot this freehand if you want, it just means that you'll have to refocus on the top of your paper every single time. How high you need your camera to be set is uh, dependent on a couple of factors, one of which is quite obvious, the, uh, the height of your shooting surface plus the height of your paper, so if you're using smaller paper than mine you're probably going to be down a little bit lower, and likewise if your paper is larger, wider than mine, uh, you're going to need to move up accordingly so that you can always focus on that top edge of the paper. The other factor that we're going to need to consider is the capabilities of our lens. So I'm shooting on a 100mm macro lens here, so I do actually have quite a wide range of um, focusing distances on this lens. I can get really, really close up uh, and get a very tight frame, maybe only a couple of sheets of paper in, uh, in the frame at that point. Or I can move further away, focus uh, still on the edge of the paper, but a much wider shot. I'm going to be experimenting with this a little bit, moving my camera up and down uh, according to the, uh, the shapes of the paper that I'm going to place down. Now it's time to start having some fun with our paper. Uh, we're going to start folding it up um, in different combinations and uh, we're going to be placing it down to see what we can actually do in front of the camera. Go and grab some paper and some paper clips if you've got them. 
Folding your paper is where the first part of our creativity comes in today. Anybody that has uh, studied origami will tell you that there are uh, so many different things that you can do with a simple uh, sheet of paper. We're not doing anything quite as complex as that today. Uh, in fact, I recommend that you start uh, nice and simple just to get a hang of uh, exactly how we're manipulating our paper and how it's going to react to uh, sitting on end. And that's what we're doing today. So. Uh, you've seen this simple piece of paper here, which I've just rolled up into a coil and just held in position for a couple of minutes so that it, it doesn't unroll again. And then I can quite simply place that on end and focus on the very top of the paper here. This is a very, very simple example where you're just going to get a couple of little curls on your shot. I'll show you that in just a second, but I wanted to show you a couple of the other things that would be really good to start with. Um, Crinkling your paper, folding it in multiple different ways, different sizes, um, can also have a really good effect. As long as it stands on end, I recommend giving it a go. Standing it on end is um, sometimes easier said than done, um, but when you do manage it, uh, you can get some really cool effects. Uh, what we're looking at is the cross section of the paper, of the folds and the curves. So this section here is what the pattern is going to become on the images. There's a lot more complex things you can do if you have some paper clips. I don't have any paper clips, so I've been using my uh, wife's hair clips, which work just as well. And you can see here that I have uh, a big bundle of paper all curled round and clipped together. Uh, this um, juxtaposition of paper uh, is actually going to create some really nice um, shadows and effects when we add our lighting. So uh, before you get to um, the complex sort of folds and curves that I'm going to be using later on, uh, let's have a look at our lighting. I still have that single white lighting arm plugged in underneath my white paper. So down here I have my diffusion material, on top of that I have these two little pieces of curled paper, which make for quite simple shapes, lots of nice little curves. Um, you can see that as I manipulate my lighting, it really changes how this scene looks. As I move it around, it's going to illuminate the uh, different sides of the paper in quite interesting and complex ways. Uh, changing your lighting around, therefore, is going to be a really important part of getting those nice, uh, smooth, soft curves and also the really uh, beautiful colours that are indicative of this kind of photography. If I take the lighting out from underneath just for a moment, we can talk a little bit about how we're going to get uh, that varied colour uh, underneath my shooting surface here. I'm going to be doing it with coloured lighting arms as opposed to colour filters. Colour filters um, are great, they, they add a really nice diffuse wash to uh, your, your photographs, but the, uh, the lighting arms are much brighter and much more vivid. Because we're using a sheet of paper here for our diffusion, uh, I don't want to be diffusing my light underneath that as well. So the coloured lighting arms, which provide a very direct form of uh, coloured light, they're going to be perfect for this. So I'm going to be plugging in a few of these. You can see on the front of the control pod that we have up to five ports, which means I can use up to five coloured lighting arms, uh, which can create some really nice effects with a lot of different light coming in from different directions and all interacting with one another to even create uh, brand new colours in the middle of this very complex um, relationship between the paper, uh, the diffusion material and the lighting. Uh, this is going to be a um, really, really fun shoot for just experimenting with your lighting, moving it around, changing the colours, changing the distance between uh, your diffusion material, this piece of paper on your surface, and the lights themselves. So moving uh, the lights in and out is going to create a lot of uh, variety and options for you to, uh, to change how your images come out. So we have those few ways to change all of our shots. We have our paper, our subject, um, so that we can change the, uh, the folds and the shapes and the relationship between the edges of the paper to create the patterns. We have our lighting to uh, create different colours and hotspots, uh, shadows, and we have the distance from uh, the camera to the top of our paper to change how wide we want our shot to be. This is all going to come together uh, depending on what you want out of these shots. 
playing around with them is really the only way to uh, get to grips with how changing all of these different aspects is going to affect your images. I'm going to be doing exactly that, changing all of these different aspects, moving my camera up and down, changing my paper and changing my lighting to create a uh, huge variance in different types of shots. Uh, the sky really is the limit when you're doing this, so be imaginative. I'm going to show you a few of the shots that I've come up with so far, and then we'll look at some of the different paper patterns that you can use to create different shapes. As you can probably gather from some of those shots, the possibilities with this type of photography really are endless. It's down to your own creativity and uh, craftiness on what you can do with your sheets of paper. Now those didn't take me very long at all, once you've got your setup sorted and you've got your focus uh, set, uh, your settings decided and your lighting in place, you can go absolutely wild, adding more paper, changing the different configurations and really experimenting with the different shapes and colours that you can get out of these types of shots. Uh, taking a look at some of the different types of paper that I've been using, um, this is probably the most simple. It's just a few sheets tied together um, by a clip, and that gives you a lot of different options, just clipping them in different places, letting them spray out maybe um, to create different patterns and shapes. Uh, that sits quite nicely on end and gives you a really good starting point. You can then start uh, getting a little bit more uh, creative with the patterns that you're um, making, clipping things in the middle, say, and making almost a figure of eight, uh, different patterns so you can shoot different parts of this as well. Um, these all create some really nice photographs. If you have something particular in mind, don't be afraid to go out and do that. I wanted to create a heart with uh, some red and some blue lighting on either side, and I did that simply by rolling over two sheets of paper and clipping them in the middle. You can get uh, quite complex with this and create some really elaborate shapes and interactions with the paper. It's really down to your own uh, ideas and what you want out of your abstract shots. Like I've said several times, I think this is all down to your own experimentation and seeing what you can do with your lighting and your uh, creative paper folding skills. I see a lot of this photography going around on Facebook pages and a lot of people trying it out when they first get new macro lenses and when uh, you're stuck at home and you don't have a lot to do, this can be a really fantastic outlet for your creativity. Uh, I really want to know what you guys think to the shots that I got today and the method that I've used to, uh, to shoot them. Um, there's probably quite a lot of different ways to achieve getting your lighting uh, underneath your uh, paper and lots, infinite perhaps, ways of folding your paper. Um, let me know down in the comments if you've done this type of photography, how you did it and how it differed to mine. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like whilst you're down in the comment section, and don't forget to subscribe for more macro photography tutorials, ideas and inspiration coming in the future. For now though guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.